Hey kids, welcome to lesson 15, Processing Arrays, Generalized Search by Making It Into a Function, Part Do. Right now, our function just searches for a 5 in a global array called Test Array. We would like to be able to use this function to search through any array though. So we will be adding a parameter to Alice to specify which array should be searched. We have a do this, add a parameter to the search function called list. What is a parameter? Well, often it's used just to refer to the variable found within the function itself. We're going to modify the code inside the function so that it loops over list, the parameter, instead of test array, the global variable. Call your function with each of the arrays provided at the top of the program. These steps are shown in the code animation below. It looks like we're adding list to search. List in our if statement where my array was. And then we're doing a search for no fives, a search for one fives, I assume, and then probably a search for the test array. Hmm, pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code. We have our code imported from our last lesson. We have three variables, no fives, one five, and a variable test array. The test array is empty. We are running a loop 10 times, which is going to put a random number between 0 and 10 into that array. It is going to do a console.log statement in the debug console. It will say original and the test array. We have a search call here. That is going to our search function. What's the search function doing? Well, it has a variable and the variable is flag and that is set to false. It is going to go through the entire array to see if anything equals a five. If something goes through a five, then it switches the variable to true. We have another console.log statement that displays in our debug console that says array has a five and then flag, which should give us that many times. Hmm. What we have to do is we have to add a parameter to the search function called list. Our function is right here. And what we're going to do is we are just going to put list right there. This pretty much means anything we're going to use in our code that's going to use search will do the entire list, not just my array. That means we have to change in our if statement too from my array to list. So we are just looking at the list in the index to see if it is five. That means anything in search should do this. That means if we go up here to our other two arrays here, no fives and one five, we should be able to use the same function search on them. How do we test that out? Well, just like the code here, we are going to call these functions. First one here is going to be search no fives. Then we are going to search one five. And finally, we're going to repeat our search on test array. This now should search all three of these arrays the same way. It'll search no fives looking for a five. It should search one fives looking for a five. And it'll do our test array, which is a 10 random numbers. Let's see if that's what actually happens. Run. Array has a five false. Array has a five true. And array has a five false. That means the first one is false. No fives should be false. Number two is true. It should have one five. And our test array doesn't have any fives in it. 
it is also false. Let's get our test array here to get a five just to make sure it is working still. False for no fives, true for one five, and our test array has one five, so it is true. It looks like our code is working the way it should. Looking back up here to our do this, we added a parameter to the search function called list. We modified the code inside the function so it loops over list the parameter instead of test array the global variable. Then we called the function with each of the arrays provided at the top of the program. More importantly, our code worked the way it should. I think that's all that code.org wants. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.